Yep. All right, perfect. Um, exciting, <laughs> exciting day today. Like everyone's saying, uh, we're going to try. You know, this might be a, a little long AMA today, so I know we have the Slido questions at the end. Hopefully, we have some more time to get a couple community members to ask questions live. But besides that, I guess Troy, you're going to kick us off. I will. I will. I just want to say thank you for everyone for coming and taking part of your day for our AMA. Um, I know the team here at Silks uh, and Tropical, a matter of fact, we're really excited about this time. Um, you know, we always talk about mirroring and blurring the lines of spectator and ownership, um, and that's what Game of Silks is, is doing for horse racing. Um, just talking about <coughs> us in in the real world this is the most exciting time uh especially for people in the business that have breed their own horses or buy young horses and 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 raise them you know it's the time of literally watching your 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 horse mature into this young athlete young adult and all of a sudden now he has the opportunity uh to go ahead and shine um that being said that's basically our journey here and our team for the game of silks. You know, we've spent tons of hours, hundreds, thousands of hours of not only thinking and brainstorming to go ahead and present the company, um, but it was also an amazing journey for all of us to go ahead and put this together in such a way that come Friday is all our hard work and all our dedication is just a first sign. And uh, like we like to say, it's, um, it's finally we're at the starting line to go ahead and present this great, great idea and great concept and and company. So, one, I wanted to thank everyone here in in the Silks community, everyone that literally has put um, our our team, their heart and soul and and sweat to to get here. I also want to thank everyone that has literally put, invested in this company one way or the other to participate. And um, it, it's just great when a, when a plan comes together. Um, so I just wanted to start off that way. Um, throughout this whole journey, uh, we've always said that we were going to blur the lines and we were going to take the, the real live racing um, game of horse racing and bring it to the metaverse and a play to earn fantasy like game. Um, amazingly, we we have done that, and the horse racing community, which has really just started to hear about us in a in an amazing positive way, um, and started to participate in our game and play. At the same time, they're trying to go ahead and really figure who we are, give suggestions getting involved and and i'll go through that uh throughout the day um but as everyone's aware uh, a few months ago we signed um a partnership an exclusive partnership with naira and fox sports and and that was absolutely huge and it took a tremendous amount of time for a lot of people um investing community people horse racing people, business people, even our community to realize how significant and how big that partnership is. Uh, I know Casey is going to speak about it more through through the day and answer questions about it. But we, we've also closed and we'll be announcing, and I, I believe that maybe we have, uh, another truly strategic, amazing deal with the Jockey Club. And for people who not know who the Jockey Club is, is they, they basically own all the data, the naming rights, and you know they're really the organization that is horse racing. When you think of horse racing in the United States, you think of the Jockey Club. Every every silk is registered with the Jockey Club. Every horse's name is registered with the Jockey Club. Every DNA, making sure that a thoroughbred is a thoroughbred goes through the jockey club. Every bit of information from post times to horses' names to races to finish lines, starting lines, purse distributions, naming of foals, births goes through the jockey club. 
and that information is is literally under lock and key for for most organizations other than a racetrack and an ADW or betting app for for horse racing. And it took a long journey for us and we we have received an an agreement with the jockey club that we're going to be receiving all the data necessary for this game and for the game of silks to participate through the jockey club and that deal absolutely is not only breathtaking but it, it it's part of the the thought process is being accepted by a community of of horse racing people the largest owners the largest you know organization governing body let's just say has literally realized accepted the idea that the game of silks is horse racing and i really wanted to start off um by letting this community know that that agreement alone um with the naira and the fox sports shows us how big the community of the game of silks can be but how big this game could be and and that's really important because the the bigger our community becomes the bigger everything and larger and more value our community becomes it's the true basis of our game everything in horse racing is dependent on valuation of horses the more horses the valuations it becomes larger purse monies it becomes uh, uh, more horses, more owners, just everything is truly dependent on a few factors. And it's the same thing with the game of silks. And with all these governing bodies and all these bodies and all these big organizations, and believe me, there's plenty more to come. And the second that we have everything inked and ready to announce, we will. But uh, it just should give everyone that little security blanket that we are doing the right thing for racing community and if the racing community believes in us shows it so should everyone else um and again we thank everyone that that is um it, it is counting on us um going into another effect of showing how the game of silks is maturing how the game of silks is really being viewed by a, a tremendous amount of people outside even horse racing is um and i'm not sure how much we announced it or spoke about it but we just hired a new cto of our company um and i'm going to butcher his name great guy sereni vasan um the amazing thing is why i'm bringing him up as early alongside fox and naira and the jockey club is his re resume is just one of those resumes that you just want to read over and over again because it gives you that warm comfort feeling of what we're doing here but he he built the blockchain infrastructure for DraftKings from scratch the marketplace the gaming products and he's literally went through his journey of his career and I don't want to say hand picked us um but he ran over to the opportunity we have at Game of Silks to build something. Um, his vision has been years of truly finding a horse racing play to earn game um, through, through, through the tens of you know, years of being in this industry. And when he went ahead and dissected who we are, what we are, who our team is, what our product line looks like, what our gameplay infrastructure looks like, this was his home, and uh, we just wanted to um, welcome him aboard more in a public place, and I know there'll be more news announcements, but that is another add-on feature or add-on to the growth of our company. Um, when there's always people adding on to our company, every once in a while, that there will also be people that leave. Um, as I'm sure everyone's aware, a lot of our writing has been slowed down a little bit by the departure of Nick. Um, and Nick's done an amazing job um, from the time that he's been here. And we, we truly do wish him an, an amazing journey for, for his future in, in writing. Um, and, you know, like, like things, 
people, companies. Sometimes you just grow apart and visions are differently. Um, but he's done an amazing job for us and really set a great path for the new people to be coming in. We are going to have uh, a little bit more of a diversified structure of writings coming. And, you know, you could see little bits and pieces of it. And I know Casey and the team has really been working on structuring a more, um, like I said, diversified group of individuals uh, writing about the, the racing community and how it's associated with silks and really just horse racing in general. So um, we're really excited for that um, progress. Um, and, you know, again, the journeys of, of building a company, there's going to be a lot of people coming and a lot of people going. And um, the amazing thing is we, we've had a, a very little turnover. And that truly says a lot about who we are and, and what people believe in us. Um, I know I touched on it before, um, and I don't really want to be long winded. I really would love to hear what the community says. I want to hear, you know, Benny's Casey, you know, Gavin's Ben's every, every, everyone's, um, take on what, what they're presenting and what they're discussing today. Cause I think it's really important, uh, for everyone to, to realize where we are today and where we're going to be over the next four, six, eight, ten 10 weeks. Um, but the most important part of realizing of where we are today and where we're going to be over the near term is truly dependent on how we perform from this point forward. And the 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 part of horse racing, like I said, as as two year olds, it is truly the most important and most greatest feeling um, that you'll have. And a matter of fact, uh, I am going to be on um, at the races again uh, on Saturday, which is, you know, the wood, uh, which is one of the last races uh, to get points for the Kentucky Derby. And one of the things I'm going to be talking about is just the feeling of how the horse races that are coming up to race of how people should be feeling and, and knowing that if this not only this game is for you meaning the silks but horse racing um tropical racing myself i i've right now we own close to 80 horses and i probably own two three hundred horses over o over my career and um one of the horses that i do own in as a digital asset in the game of silks is a half brother a horse called instant coffee who was on the derby trail and he might slip in, but I, I don't know if he will. But he was in the Arkansas Derby the other day. And I literally stood up. I literally went ahead and just got so excited and so involved in that race, the Arkansas Derby, because somehow I was attached to it. And I was attached to it by a digital asset. And I had the same exact feeling as any yearling that I owned uh, in the game. So um, I hope everyone has that same feeling moving forward starting on saturday um and uh and, and they really feel that emotional attachment of this journey um one thing that i i did not mention that that i do want to mention is um dan really wanted to be on this call today on this ama it was something that um what was truly uh uh, a, a mishap in regards to just timing. Um, he he did go on a family trip for the the Jewish holidays, and um, and he is in Israel, so there was no no possible way for him to join us. He was truly upset, and um, we're going to miss him on this call. Uh, but we're going to try to do the best we can uh, to fill his shoes. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about too. And again, I know Casey is touching on this and is going to add um, is that starting Friday with the first race of of the two year olds at, at Keeneland, because that is the first race. And um, Saturday, there won't be any two year old races at Keeneland, but we do have them Friday. Um, we are starting the game for us at one percent of the real world. That being said, um, there are a lot of horses that race in a, in a particular race. And even though in the real world, 
every horse receives something. Um, the reason why racetracks pay out doll, you know, literally a hundred dollars, a hundred and ten dollars, a hundred and forty dollars, those numbers are there to go ahead and pay the jockey fee, a LASIK fee, and little fees that the racetracks go ahead and have. And instead of going ahead and making a racehorse owner um, pay $75, $37, or whatever that dollar fee is, they basically take it out of the original purse structure to pay out for everybody. We felt as a company that we are truly making this as real to the real life horse racing, that the horses that are participating in truly the purse are the horses that are gonna be getting paid uh, in the game of silks. So we, we have st started with first through fourth. Uh, again, that might change down the road when we do hand out or do increase the payout. But for the amount of time, effort, and cost from us to pay out pennies or single digits of dollars, it's just way too hard, way too much time for that. And again, in the real world, we wouldn't be receiving that money either. So we just really wanted to make sure that everyone in the game realizes what everything that happens in the real world of horse racing is going to happen in the game of silks. And that is truly the purse payout also. So I just wanted to go ahead and touch that. And if anyone else has any other, you know, in regards to any questions down the road, I am going to stay on the call as long as I can. Uh, and again, just to close it out and not truly be as long winded as I am. I just, again, wanted to thank everybody that is participating in this journey with us. Um, personally, I know that uh, this team, this company is not going to let anyone down, that we are going to go ahead and give you all the best product we possibly can, the best game, the best experience. Um, and everything comes in stepping stones and everyone has a learning curve. Um, but get excited. This is really um, a long journey from us all. You know, it's been a year since the first avatar has been purchased. Since that time, uh, you know, we became the seventh largest sporting NFT project on OpenSea when they were going ahead and 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 and, and keeping those statistics. We've done an, an amazing job. We we literally signed again two of the 800 pound gorillas in real live horse racing have given us the thumbs up, the hug, and the pat on the back to go forward, which again we cannot talk enough about. Um, and the next three or four announcements that I believe are going to be coming short term is going to blow everyone away. Also, so again, thanks again, uh, and I'll I'll hand it off to um, Squid and his team. And um, again, I'll be around for any questions. Um, I think from here, uh, Casey or Benny, if you want to take it, and uh, we'll get the slides ready. I don't mind taking it from here. Um, Troy, I really appreciate all the words you had to say, and uh, yeah, you're spot on with everything. I hope everyone's doing um, really well today. Pretty excited around kind of the upcoming future, and uh, you know the, the the horses in the game of silk starting to race. It's uh, it's beyond crazy how much has uh, has happened and transpired over the past year and, and gotten us to this point. And it's all being realized. And that's kind of, you know, super, super exciting um, in general, just to see kind of how far we've come and how an idea could turn into a reality. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I do want to, I guess, kick things off by, talk about, by talking about um, the portal and the payout distribution and that process as a whole just so that there's clarity around getting paid, clear, clarity around tracking races, notifications, things along those, um, that fold. Um, and as you'll see kind of in the, in, the, in the demonstration right now, the process and I'd say execution flow that we've built over the past you know, year has really caught into a point right now where the game of soaps is, is really capable of taking any kind of big layer task Part, um, breaking it down into tangible pieces, then moving forward on executing it and implementing it into the into the portal. So, um, first thing I'm going to go over 
is the payout statuses um, that are associated with getting paid. And I'm gonna describe them, describe how you visualize them in the portal, and then talk through um, kind of what to expect uh, from the portal um, in the next production launch. So why don't I go to the main stage slides. Um, ben, I'll share for now, just so I can make sure the order is cool, if that's all right. And then um, take it from there. Main stage slides, is that cool? Um, all right, so um, this is just a demo kind of screen to share. And it's not gonna, basically I included the four statuses um, kind of on top of each other, just so everyone can see what they look like. But a normal transaction is only gonna have one of these statuses underneath it. And what you're looking at are the racing rewards. Um, so there's four statuses. The first one is not eligible, um, no avatar owned, which means that after the completion of a race, once we pull the, the data um, from the jockey club for the results of the race, we're basically going to cross-reference and check if that owner of the racehorse owns an avatar. And if there's no avatar owned, there's no prize distribution that gets allocated, um, but you'll still see that your horse theoretically, you know, raced and, and, earned, and earned money, um, but the status will be associated with the fact that you didn't own an avatar. Um, the second status is pending um, identity confirmation. Um, as I'll get to in a moment, we've implemented an identity check flow directly into the portal in two locations. And the reason you'll see right now in the portal production, so you'll actually see in the live version that when you click on your, on your account name, on your wallet, we have basically a skin wallet that pops up. This is part of our ongoing initiative to integrate and reduce friction directly in the portal. But you'll notice that there's a rewards tab and the rewards tab has an unclaimed rewards balance. So if you do own an avatar and you earn rewards, but you have yet to, uh, um, to confirm your identity, we're still going to you know, update the, the rewards balance for you so that you have a right to get those funds once you confirm your identity, right? So if the status is pending identity confirmation, you'll see a balance in the unclaimed rewards. Um, you'll then click the claim button, which will bring up the identity confirmation flow. And once you essentially confirm your identity, the status of the reward will go to pending approval. And that's when we, as a Game of Silks company, get the um, the request sent directly into our into our admin dashboard, and then we process process the payout. Once you confirm your identity once, um, the payout is going to be automated. So automatically, whenever you earn rewards, the request will get sent directly to Silks without you having to click a button or request it, um, and then it'll get paid. But there's that first time, for example, if you have not identified. Um, that you're basically going to have to do so before the rewards get sent to pending approval. Then once we send the reward out, the status will get updated to paid. Um, that's kind of the flow. And I'll show right now, one, you could either click claim and it'll bring you through that flow. Um, additionally, once you go to the portal, you'll actually see that we did push it live um, end of last week. So if you go to your settings tab, I'll show you right now, and you can see that if you log in, you'll notice in your account section, um, you'll see confirm identity available on the bottom of your screen. And that's essentially going to allow you to go through the identity confirmation flow. And then, you know, the future payouts you earn will automatically set, get sent to um, the pending approval. Um, once you go through the flow and you kind of confirm, um, you'll see the update and the status change in your account settings as well. So this is live already. Um, you know, I do like to post kind of demo videos once things go live. So there will be a bunch of those coming out once. Um, the next portion of the portal goes live with racing, um, and you'll get to see kind of how all of this interconnects with each other there as well. Um, so that's the first most important thing. It's one, make sure you got an avatar in your wallet, and that's associated with your, in the same wallet as your horses, um, so that you can actually earn the rewards. And then two, go through the identity confirmation process so that we can then um, update the status of your payouts to um, pending approval, and then we'll get them sent and approved. Um, we're going to start sending out payouts, you know, beginning on on Friday uh, with the first race. So um, it's a pretty exciting time for us. And, you know, a big, I'd say, initiative we have in place, especially from a product standpoint, is how do we ensure we get product launches to go live, but then increasingly implement new features and functionalities down the road. So that will include, for example, the ability for us to demonstrate the reward that Silks has paid out. Obviously, everything's verified on the blockchain. So you will be seeing that. Um, there's a game of Silks Wallet sending these funds, um, but also having kind of like a view at, you know, the previous, for example, um, results of races and the, earn, the rewards that people earned is something that's important as well. So what I'm about to show you right now 
is the actual new tab that's going to go live in the next production launch, which we've been working on, or we're going to get live very, very soon. Um, and that is the the races tab. So this is basically, I'd say, you know, the game of silks coming to life. And what I mean by that, as I show you right now, um, it takes the ownership of your horses and it takes the um, the data that comes from upcoming races and emerges them into a dashboard and view that supports um, visualizing and understanding, um, you know, what races have results, what races are upcoming, and then um, who owns the horse, et cetera. And right now, when this goes live, it will be directly linked with OpenSea. So there will be driving behavior to the liquid assets directly to OpenSea. Um, but our marketplace contract is actually completed. It's just a matter of us getting it implemented into the portal um, and approved. So it's going through the final stages of testing, as well as some of the other contracts. Um, and then that'll that'll get deployed. And directly in this dashboard, not only you'll be able to see the owners of the horses, the horses themselves, you'll also get the ability to view and visualize uh, you also get the ability to to actually purchase a horse, and then um, you know this will all be integrated with fractionalization as well. Um, so this is pretty cool. Um, you know, Casey's going to go over some of the core questions that were asked, but just at a very high level, a lot of the core questions actually have a lot to do with one another. So this is a way for you to visualize the entries and results of races, but there's also a component here that has to do with the horse data. And I think you know one thing that's going to make Game of Silks incredibly successful and enjoyable is being able to learn about your horses as you dive into them about other horses and then also having the, the data of your horse get updated once it actually wins a race or you know is sold at auction so we are working simultaneously on implementing you know refined data to our horses updating them with new um you know, new information as they come in and that's part of an ongoing initiative to ensure that um, not only coming up in the entries tab and the results tab when you click into them, they have the updated stats as well. So um, that's kind of one cohesive piece. And then, um, yeah, this is going to come out very, very shortly. We're just finalizing the um, data from the Jockey Club, getting it all going smoothly. And uh, and then when you log into the portal, you should be able to see it at all. So that's kind of a high-level overview of what to expect in the very, very near future as it relates to racing and payouts. Um, and yeah, I'm very, very excited um, for everyone to get a chance to to go through it, um, to experience it, um, and then to get you know essentially paid out as they as they earn the rewards. So I'd say that's like a high level overview of the identity confirmation process, the payout reward tracking, and then the racing tab. Um, and then yeah, I'm sure as uh, as we open up to more questions, we can go through the other aspects of the project as well. Um, but yeah, excited to share. I hope everyone's excited about this. Um, I think the quality of the, the design speaks for itself and then the quality of the experience will do, do the talking on its own. Um, and overall, we're, we're really, really thrilled to, uh, to be at this point right now and to get this live. So thank you, everyone. Uh, it's going good. It's uh, it's been a uh, it's been a whirlwind week, and we're just getting started. Um, I hope all of you guys saw some of the press hits that we had this morning with Blockster uh, and VentureBeat. Um, that's a a, a of things to come. We have a, a handful of other things that are coming out um, that'll be rolling out in the next few days, even. So we have a a press push that we're doing around hiring Serini. We're all very thrilled to have you on board. Obviously, with his uh, is his experience that's so directly applicable to this project. Um, we're, we're super excited to kind of rounding out this superstar team that we have uh, to deliver the promise of this project and deliver it into the world. Uh, we also have the Jockey Club announcement that's going out. Um, those of you that are coming in from a horse racing background understand exactly how important that is. Um, Troy obviously um, let everybody know about it, but it's huge. It's absolutely enormous to be, have that direct level of data. Um, we could have done the project without them, but it is a massive amount of support from uh, from the pillars of the industry, essentially, uh, driving us forward. Um, and when we had announced the Naira deal, we said, hey, this is the first domino to fall. Um, there's another one. Um, and they keep on coming. Um, so a couple of things that, that were on my list. And, you know, as a marketing guy and, and um, you know, I saw the blowback on, on the Kentucky Derby and announcement. I'm, I'm absolutely want to take responsibility for the way that went down. 
Uh, I also want to kind of clarify a little bit around it. Um, the intention for the derby sweeps and the derby contests in general was always about you guys. It was always about figuring out a way to reward people that had come in early and that had Genesis avatars with an opportunity to join the team uh, in, in Troy's suite at Churchill for the, for the race. Um, as such, we wanted to make sure that we were kind of doing it the, the right way. Uh, with a little bit less concern about, okay, how are we going to use this to kind of drive in um, a, a new audience? We'll have promotions around that. We'll be announcing those shortly. Um, but really, it was about it was about you guys and about making sure that we're doing it. But it was also about where we see ourselves in relation to the sport. And and it goes back to we want to be and we are the future of thoroughbred horse racing. And we are the official blockchain game of thoroughbred horse racing. And what that means is that we need to be official. Uh, as such, we had to we had to do a licensing agreement with Churchill Down so that we could use their logo and use the name. You'll see other sweepstakes that are going around um, that hint at it, and they're giving the same reward, but they're not using the name, they're not using the logo. There's a there's a cost associated with doing that. There's a and there's a lead time. You know, closing an initial first business agreement with Churchill Downs, that's going to take some time. And it took us a little bit of time so that when we when we announced it, it was almost ready to kind of close. Um, that said, we're going to do the drawing shortly, um, and we're going to be pretty excited to announce who that winner is. Uh, and then from a marketing perspective, it's the it's the gift that keeps giving. You know, we're going to we plan on doing a lot of content around that experience that we're going to have uh, with one of you. Um, and then we're going to have some other similar um, sweet stakes opportunities that roll out, um, and we'll have those announced um, very soon. Um, another thing that we had touched on on the quarterly review or, or one of the last AMAs was around rolling out an affiliate program. Um, we're ready to go with that. Um, we have a sign-up sheet that we're going to distribute. I'm thinking that we'll probably wait until next week. I think that you guys should be focused on the race. Uh, race is coming up. I don't want to overload everybody, um, but it will be there. We're going to have an opportunity to give you guys the tools to share the, your excitement around the project to, through your network uh, and then be rewarded by doing that. So that'll be coming soon. We're likely going to have multiple levels of, of what that means, uh, as well as it gives us a means to go out to professional affiliate networks, essentially, and, and leverage them and their networks um, to kind of keep building the uh, our audience and, and continue our growth. Um, the other thing I had on my list is around the, the sale of new horses. Um, as you guys can see or, or insinuated, um, one of the things that, that I had mentioned previously was that we really want to make sure that every horse that races, um, you guys have an opportunity to own them. So the solution that we had around that is we have uh, there's uh, 16 horses that have been flagged for the first race. Um, a handful of them um, were already owned, um, and some of them were also unrevealed. So that's an opportunity for, for somebody to get those. Uh, and then there was a, a handful of them that just weren't in the records of Equibase because they, weren't, they hadn't had a, a proper uh, first workout, and they weren't in the subject of an auction. So as they get registered for races, they get put into the Jockey Club's backend system. As they get put into the backend system, we have that data, and then we're able to mint those horses. Uh, so those horses, we're, we're going to get them up. We're going to put them up for sale, um, the ones that hadn't been in. Uh, we're going to get put them up for sale in a reverse auction style. Um, this way that well, as the uh, race approaches, the price will go down, and, and we're certain that these will, these will sell. Um, and some of you guys will be lucky enough to watch uh, a Silks horse. Uh, race on Friday, which is what we're super excited about. Um, so I'll, that'll be the strategy kind of going forward. There's going to be additional horses that we probably add to the collection over time. Um, the way that we're kind of thinking about it is like looking at doing kind of thematic collections around things like maybe finding a specific sire and finding the foals of that sire and then packaging, packaging, packaging them up and putting them into the game uh, as a combination, again, of auctions and unrevealed horses. So expect more of those to kind of come in. Uh, there will be a, a largely curated collection as they kind of come in in the process. Um, but we'll keep adding adding horses kind of as we go. Um, now that we have this direct line of, of data from, from the Jockey Club. Um, the other thing on my list was around uh, the land update. I know we kind of came out and allowed everybody to kind of redeem their land. Uh, you still can. Uh, we were in the process of looking at the system with which we were going to sell the land once we opened up the map. 
uh, and we weren't super thrilled with the way that process looked. Um, it's always our goal to deliver a very polished experience. Um, we don't want to rush things out. The, the functionality around land is also contingent around stabling, so that's a little bit further out. We could have pushed land as a, as a quick means to drive revenue, um, but we decided that it makes much more sense to make sure that the, that's a very polished experience for you guys. We were looking at the map, you're clicking on land, you're selecting a handful of acres, and then you're just minting and buying them. Like none of this having to go send it over, find the piece on OpenSea, it was, it was much more convoluted. So we're streamlining that and that caused us to delay. Um, we'll get a, a better ETA when that's coming out, uh, once we got, kind of get on the other side of this kind of initial first push on races. Um, with that, I think I've covered um, the sections that I have, uh, and we can go to kind of the, the point of this call, which is the AMA itself. Um, and thank you all for, for submitting your Slido questions. I think it's a, it's a great tool for you guys to, to be thoughtful and give you enough time to kind of consider how you want to approach things and kind of see what other people are, are, are thinking about. Um, and so we got quite a number of, of questions in here. We'll try to get through. Uh, as many of them as we can, but we also kind of want to also open up the floor for anybody with any live questions. Um, so I'll, maybe I'll read them and then I'll, I'll hand them off to team members a, as needed. Um, so the first question with kind of the most votes, uh, races are just a couple of weeks away. Is the team prepared to deploy functionality for race winnings and payouts? Um, yeah, I think, I think we answered this. Um, you know, Benny, do you want to add any color to this? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, we are we're beginning to pay out the prize rewards um, with the first race. Um, the uh, the actual portal functionality is coming out in the next production launch, which we're trying to get live ASAP so you could visualize it. But you'll be able to track and view the payouts directly on chain prior to the front end actually um, representing it. But the payout um, flow is, is in place, and we're going to take care of that. Awesome. Um, Next question, uh, it was about breeding. We, we've seen a, a lot of questions about breeding. Can we, can we uh, you know, put the line in the sand and can define what the breeding uh, rewards look like? Because some of you are using that as a, a strategy when you consider whether uh, or not to buy Phillies versus Colts and, and, and such. Um, so we had initially planned, and I think we're going to stick with that, that, that we're, we're going to do Breeding rewards is 10% of mint fees for sires and 15% for mares. Um, there's a bunch of discussions about having a bit more of a nuanced system uh, where the owners of, uh, of the, the uh, brood mares and, um, and sires can participate in the winnings of, those, of their offspring. That's going to be really complicated. And, and to be fair, we're, we're three years away from this being kind of a meaningful bit of, of content for us. That said, totally respect that you guys need to create your strategies as you, as you think about how you're weighing the different options of, of which horses to, to invest in. Um, so the rule of thumb is 10% of min fees for offspring for sires and 15% for mares. Uh, at the end of the day, yes, that's going to make sires probably more valuable. Um, but you're much less likely to have an active sire than you are to have a mare. There's a lot more mares every year than there are sires. So there's a little bit of a, you know, a risk mitigation and risk reward um, relationship to it. Uh, next one, uh, when will the portal be accessible from your phone, from mobile phones? Benny? Right, there we go. One sec. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we actually have um, created responsive functionality for like 90% of all the pages on the portal. Um, our goal is to get that out in the next three to five weeks um, with the added benefit of not needing to connect your wallet when you log in. So as everyone knows, um, we've implemented logging in with your email and password and then connecting your wallet. Um, we're one, as you'll actually notice in the most recent update, if you go to your avatar page or to your resource page, the speed is incredibly fast. Um, it loads in a, in a split second. So um, what we're gonna have in place is the ability for you to go on your phone, your tablet, your computer, log in with just your email and password. The pages will load automatically incredibly fast and they'll all be responsive. Um, so we're looking with, within three to five weeks to get that all out. Um, and then obviously when you need to, to sign your wallet um, for a transaction on the blockchain, at that point you're gonna need to connect and, 
can sign from your wallet. So that's an update there. Great, thank you. Um, the next one's also for you uh, about fractionalization. Uh, when is it going to happen? Yep. So we actually have the contracts. I think I briefly mentioned before we have the contracts for the marketplace and fractionalization done. Um, we we had you know different changes we made over the past couple of months to better enforce um, a better user experience and less potential possibility for exploiting um, just around you know the horses that you sell slash fractionalizing the offers and marketplace systems that are in place. So both contracts are built in a way where they actually work together nicely. And uh, those contracts are getting audited right now, and then we're going to implement them directly into the into the portal itself. So, from a prioritization slash critical path perspective, our priority right now is getting the next production version of the portal live, which will have all of the races functionality in place. Um, after that, you'll see the responsiveness, speed, and ease of access to log in. And then right after that, our priority is to put fractionalization um, live for the community, and that feature has to come out when um, it's also compatible with the payout process so that we ensure that when they establish the results of a race, um, the payouts are distributed appropriately across the, the actual ownership group. So um, that's the order. Um, and yeah, we're working diligently to get it all, all, all live. Awesome. Uh, next one, if a horse wins a race and not on the silk player, what happens to those rewards? Uh, so I'll take this one. So. You know, we have apps, and I had mentioned this previously also, we have no intention of keeping any of the rewards. We, we very much want to get those uh, into uh, into your guys' hands as, as owners of the horses. We recognize that, you know, the, probably the biggest marketing opportunity that we have is to have a bunch of people winning money uh, playing the game. Um, that said, we have a couple of horses that are racing on Friday that are unrevealed horses that are still in the collection. Um, it is unlikely that those horses are going to get revealed um, prior to the race. And if one of those horses wins, where does that purse money go? Um, so we have some ideas around this. Like we ideally, we would attach it to the unrevealed horse so that when that person is lucky enough to reveal that horse, not only do they have a great horse that 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 ran, but they also have a great great horse that ran and won and has a um, has a reward attached to it. There's technical lift associated with doing that. So we will we'll keep track of what these are. And we'll figure out a way to get it done. Uh, you know, the other alternative is that we maybe create a prize pool around other uh, ancillary activities that we do within the community and, and reward out the money that way. Um, but I think the, probably the best way is to to reattach it to the horses. Um, it's on the backlog. When we're looking at critical path, it's things like that that are going to be fringe cases that we really want to do. But we'll have to find uh, find the time to get them done. Um, Next one, when can we expect a catalog update? Um, specifically because you know trying to dig through the internet to find out information about horses is laborious. So uh, uh, Benny, you want to take that one? I'm sure. So when are we doing a catalog update? So this is yeah. all part of our yeah, this is all part of our initiative with the data we just received through the Jockey Club. So as I mentioned, um, it has a lot to do with one, updating the current data associated with our horses. So there's a lot of different data associated with racing slash auction slash naming that we're going to implement so that all of the horses are up to date um, and, and, and linked and synced. And then that also includes um, adding additional horses as well. So it's all part of our initiative around horse data. Um, and yeah, there should be more information slash updates coming in the very near future. Awesome. Um... Next one, what is the formal reward and payout structure for the season? Uh, Troy went into this pretty detailed. So it's, we're, we're paying 1% of first through fourth uh, for each race. So the race slides that we've shared that kind of outline the entries also shows, show the prize pool. Uh, the race results will also show that, and they'll show exactly what people um, earned as rewards. But it would be 1% of what the real life horse does for first to fourth. Um, anything past that is, um, it, it becomes like untenable and unscalable. Um, next one, um, looking at the Q1 roadmap that you shared at 22, um, it appears at the time of writing that only half the items have been released. Please address. Um, so Benny just walked through through a bunch of this um, these things, and, and the way we look at it is it's all about kind of critical path, um, making sure that we are delivering highly polished and results. Um, so that we're not, once something's done, we can kind of move on. We have a lot of plans to add additional features around those those features as after they roll out. 
Um, but but for now, it's all about critical path. And the critical path for us obviously has been making sure that race uh, updates and race rewards are happening. Um, closing the jockey club is is a huge deal to that end, uh, but it also you know is very recent relatively. Um, so it's pushed us back a little bit. Um, but I think Benny's just gone through the next sprints of what we can expect for um, the next handful of updates, and and it's all it's all kind of coming. Um, next, uh, when will non crypto holders be able to access the game onboarding via credit card without the complexity of a crypto wallet? Um, Venmo is still integrated in the game. Um, the the issue that we fundamentally have because this is obviously very important for us to being able to expand outside the audience of Web3 native folks like yourselves or people that are willing to go through the pain of cre creating a MetaMask wallet, getting it funded with ETH and doing all the things necessary um, to be truly um, crypto based. Um, Venmo is working, but the way that our horse delivery mechanism works is that there's these multiple steps. So in order to fund that second step of taking delivery of your horse, they need to have ETH in their wallet. Um, so it's become a fairly manual process for a community team to walk people through that. Um, that's just in the, it's not, nothing to do with Venmo directly. It's, it's more to do with the way that that, um, that process was designed, um, which was really the intent of being, um, of creating a very secure feature around it. Um, we have on our roadmap to have a much more fluid fiat on-ramp. It's something that's very important to us. Uh, but again, it's not something that we want to deliver a world-class experience for you guys first, uh, and then open it up to a larger audience and, and allow people to kind of come in through credit cards. We want to make sure by the time those guys get here um, that you guys are, you know, owning a bunch of horses, you're fractionalizing them, you have stables up and running, and you guys are the ones that are welcoming that group in. So that fiat on ramp is on the list, uh, but it's further down the line. Um, next one, will avatar rarity categories, legendary rare, common be included as a trait for avatars in the marketplace? Um, this is, wasn't originally planned for. Um, I know that there's things like, you know, rarity sniper and stuff like that, that kind of calculate those. Um, we can, we're, we'll put this on the backlog um, now that we know that, you know, this is something that community is interested in. Um, the next one is around the Kentucky Derby sweepstakes. I talked about this. It was just around the timing. Um, so stay tuned for, um, for, for more information on that, including the announcer, announcement of the winner, as well as additional um, similar sweepstakes and contests. Uh, will there be a way to consolidate land owned in Skyfalls into one contiguous plot? Um, there was another question, I think that was kind of similar to this. Um, I talked about how we're, we're kind of rebuilding the, the land uh, purchasing functionality. Um, that right now we don't have a, a plan as far as that release to allow people to um, consolidate and, and move land or trade land. I think that would be the easiest way to do it. Um, but we do have a, a rollout plan that we'll, we'll get to um, at a later date about how we're going to roll out land. I think you guys will, will appreciate it. Um, it should be a much better system. We're talking about functionality around land also and how that's all going to work. Um, so that's for, further down the line um, and we'll get to it. Can I add to that, Casey, also? Because I, I guess there's a couple ways of interpreting that question. Um, just a note also, if what you're referring to is combining them into farms, because when you do create a farm, um, when we introduce that functionality down the road, visually on the map, you, it will look like one piece, right? They won't be separated by the grid. Um, the next one's uh, for you too, Benny. When Metaverse? So there's going to be a lot coming in the very near future. Um, actually, if you look at the slide I just posted in the main stage chat, you'll notice that at the top header it says Enter Metaverse. Um, we actually have the first version of the Metaverse onboarding gameplay completed, um, and it's it's pretty pretty great, especially for a WebGL build. Um, it's just a matter of us pushing it live with the portal um, and having that button on the top um, of the header. Um, and our plan is to launch it shortly after um, everything from a portal production standpoint is live for racing. So it's actually not a hindrance on our other deliverables because we have our, um, and they're on the on the call right now, a lot of the guys, um, we have a really fantastic 3D immunity team that kind of works um, separate from the portal team itself. So just about getting the functionality implemented in the portal, which shouldn't take too long. Um, so we should expect that actually in the very near future. And there's going to be a lot of 
incredible content that we sneak peeked months ago, actually, associated with, uh, with a trailer and the Hall of Silks. Um, and all of this will be coming out live as we, as we get that going. So um, a lot of really nice initiatives that are going to come to life in, in the very short term. Uh, next one's for you too. Uh, has any of the Silks metadata been leaked to the public? So this is, a, I guess, a really critical piece of our build process and everything that we're building right now. Um, we put a lot of effort and time in place into ensuring that our, our data is secured and our endpoints are not exposed. And on top of that, ensuring the scrambling of metadata and ID values um, so that you know, none of this actually gets leaked out to the public. Um, there have been things that we've implemented in the most recent months to ensure that this gets even better and better and more secure. Um, but yeah, right now they're, they're pretty top notch. So that includes both the avatar and the resources. Resources are to be verified directly on, uh, on the randomization process and then the, the avatars themselves. Um, we actually did a, a whole new scrambling mechanic that, that's, that's in place right now. Um, next one, will the OBS uh, two-year-old horses be added to the catalog? Uh, I, I touched a little bit on um, when and how we're going to be adding additional horses. Uh, the OBS two-year-old auction is, as a premier auction, um, is is one of those categories of horses that we would highlight um, and get them added. Um, so right now we're adding the horses as they get registered to race. Um, we'll continue to add horses. I think that the OBS two-year-old auction is a is a perfect example of of horses that we'll be adding. Um, next, why is the avatar mint still open? It looks like it's fairly obvious someone's taking advantage of the avatar mint. Uh, we had a we've had a number of conversations around this. We we see the suspicious behavior that's happening, particularly around that contract. Um, this is something that we're having now that we have Serena on board. We're, we're taking very seriously and we're taking a look at. Um, we'll hope to have some um, new information on that uh, pretty soon. Um, what is the benefit to keeping a horse in a private stable versus community stable? Um, Benny. Um, so um, Troy did mention that we're doing 1% right now. On top of that, we're also removing the community stable fee that will exist down the road. So prior to farm gameplay coming out live, um, there will be no stabling fee taken for horses that are not on farms. Um, so that's being removed right now. But the benefits um, are obviously going to be that there will be a fee charged for users that are not have their horse stabled. Um, and then on top of that, you know, there's the whole gameplay strategy associated with stabling on a farm and diversifying with others. So um, that's kind of the main thing between the community farm and the, the normal farms. And then questions also get between private and public. Private farms, um, you'll, you'll basically only be able to stable your own horses and, um, you know, you'll, you'll, take full, um, you'll take all the, the earnings. Um, but then a public farm allows you to work and collaborate with other people at the same time. And depending on how the farm's structured, um, and who you're stabling with will contribute to um, the ultimate benefits of being stable there. But that, that's part of the gaming mechanic in and of itself. Uh, next, uh, can you tell us what the price pool run looks like, um, meaning at today's treasure levels, are we good for year one? Um, we get this question, I think, every AMA. Um, people want us to make a, a, a treasury wallet and make it with everybody so that they can see that. We have the funds necessary to one percent. Um, we're you know we're a private company. I think Dan answered this last time. We don't carry a bunch of uh, of our capital in crypto. We have it in a bank account and we're using it to build the project. Um, it doesn't make sense for us to kind of just have a million dollars just sitting on the side and not being used. Um, that said, you'll start seeing people get paid. We understand that there's there, that there's a uh, a necessary level of trust in, in a project like this. And, and we appreciate the trust that you guys have shown to date um, through both your commitment to the community as well as to, you know, the, the unbelievable amount of assets that are being purchased and, and the value of those assets. Um, so you'll see this weekend that people are starting to get paid. This is not something that people need to worry about, um, but we won't be making a, a treasury um, wallet uh, transparently visible. It's just not something that we're going to do. Um, next, is Silks currently involved in any lawsuits? No, we're not. Uh, after that, uh, is there any more partnerships in the pipe in the pipeline? I think we touched on this. So Naira, Jockey Club, Church of Downs. So certainly plenty of things that are happening uh, within the sport of horse racing. We'll have a bunch more. Um, Troy's been very busy working 
um, and answering fielding calls, honestly, because as, as the, the project has kind of gained momentum, um, it's, it's less of a uh, push and more, you know, there, there's a lot more people coming to us than we have to go in, going to them. So we're prioritizing those and, and making sense of which deals we want to do, which ones we, we, we can put on hold for now. Um, next one, now racing is nearly here. What is the marketing strategy for bringing new players? Um, I've touched on this kind of on a high level, but I think it's worth repeating. Um, so when you look at comparable games like Serrera Rainmakers, um, they, they have a power curve that's similar to like my background in, in free to play gaming, which is, you know, 90, 95 percent of the revenue is coming from a tiny fraction of those players. Um, and then they create these systems and architecture to support that massive amount of users. Um, really, though, they're just hoping that they'll kind of graduate into that top tier, uh, and not not very many of them do. Usually, you, you find you, who your payers are quite quickly. Uh, our approach um, and the way that we're thinking about it is, is you know, when in doubt, we look to um, the the uh, to the real world of of, of horse racing uh, for guidance. We look at it as we're just going to skim that top ten percent of people. We're going to talk to them. Those are the people that represent the market makers and the owners of the project uh, and then we'll give that 10 percent the, the tools uh, and the infrastructure to bring on that rest of that audience so you guys are that 10 percent. you guys are the market makers you guys are the owners uh, and the breeders in the world of silks um, we're going to give you guys tools like stabling like fractionalization uh, like the affiliate program so that you guys can be on that next level of users uh, this way we can stay true to what our core is, which our core is that we want to reinvent uh, the sport of thoroughbred horse racing. And it's not just the races, it's the culture, it's the prestige, it's the emotional response that people have when they own a horse. Uh, owning a fraction of a fraction of a horse is not going to give you the same feeling of butterflies in your stomach when your horse gets into the starting gate. Owning 100% of that horse will. Um, and we're going to give you guys those tools. And that's why Genesis Avatar Holders are the only ones that are able to buy full, complete horses. And that's our commitment to you guys, that you guys are going to be the leaders and you guys are going to be the ones that drive this. Um, and then we'll worry about that next level of people kind of down the road. Uh, our model, our financial model supports this. We, we know that we don't have, need to have an audience of hundreds of thousands of people. I'd like to double the size of our holder population now. Um, and I think that we're going to get there. Uh, as you can see with the press that's gone out, we're doing some advertising, some of the initiatives that we have with Naira that are coming out. There's, this is going to be a very exciting summer um, for Silks, and we can expect to see the community continue to grow. Um, next one up, how will winnings be processed? Will uh, Chainlink Oracle um, be used to sync the smart contract to race results or some other method? Uh, Benny? Can you, can you repeat that real quick? Uh, people want to know how winnings will be processed. Will it be through chain link um, and sync to the smart contract, or how else are we going to do it? Okay, so it's actually it's done um, on our back end by reading off the Jockey Club data um, through their API. We basically read it and then we we process it, and then the actual processing of the transaction could be recorded on chain, but the settlement of the contest is off chain. Um, it's really important to us as the community will see. Of keeping things on chain that's needed on chain, and then things that are off chain to reduce friction, a streamlined process, um, and make sure that if there is, you know, an exploit or a problem, it could be easily cleaned up and fixed. Um, so yeah, the payout logic um, is on off chain, and then the actual settlement you could track on chain. Okay, thanks. Um, next one, I like this one. Who is the head of PR and communications at Games and Silks? Can this person be replaced? Um, when I came on board, uh, I brought on a PR firm um, back at the end of last year. Uh, they, they totally dropped the ball and, and I take responsibility for that. Um, we did immediately terminate them for what it's worth. Um, we have a new PR firm. Uh, they're fantastic. They've hit the ground running um, as evidenced by the articles that, that hit today. Uh, you can expect that quite a number will continue to be hit. You know, For us, it's, it's fantastic when we start getting kind of uh, mainstream coverage, like uh, getting getting the Venture Beat article this morning, getting Web3 coverage, which is another thing that we hadn't been getting with the Blockster coverage. 
uh, we've been able to secure quite a bit of coverage within, um, you know, the horse racing uh, trades, uh, but not not so much outside of that. So now that race season is here, we can expect a lot more activity to happen. Our new PR firm is fantastic, and they're they're doing a, a, an incredible job for us. Um, next, uh, when will public stables be open, and how do we go about establishing public stable rates, stable appearance? Um, will there be a lesson in the process, um, Benny? So um, in terms of stable gameplay, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, everything about stable. Okay, so um, basically stable gameplay, so I want to talk about real quick, um, is kind of five on the priority list in terms of features we're putting out. Um, so once that goes live, what the community is going to see, and we're actually improving it, um, where we rebuilt the stable logic to be completely off-chain so that when you request a stable, things like that, there's no gas fees implemented because it's going to be a mechanic that's going to be exercised quite frequently. Um, so we, we are rewriting all of that logic to support kind of streamlining the user experience. Um, and that's going to go out live basically after we introduce the new land features that um, you briefly touched on, which I'll talk for right now, which is basically the following. Um, a couple things. The first one is um, I, I was speaking with someone the other day and I was breaking down the product roadmap and also the prioritization process we have implemented. And there are three pillars, essentially, for the way that we prioritize gameplay features. Um, the first is user value. The second one is business impact. And the third is legal risk. User value really focuses on the ways that we're implementing and introducing new features and mechanics to our user base. So an example is we are prioritizing um, fractionalization as a core gameplay feature. We're prioritizing payout distribution, which is super critical. Um, and then we're also, you know, going to implement um, reducing the friction for onboarding new people because that's super, super crit critical for our growth. But another thing that we that you mentioned and touched on, Casey, was the land um, and how that is associated with user value. And um, we were going to introduce ways to sell the land that would require um, not too much work from the game of silks because we'd be able to leverage other marketplaces. But at the same time, it would it would essentially impact the way that um, you could purchase directly from our portal and navigates and man and and choose to purchase directly off of the map itself. So we're introducing a new feature that's going to allow for click and mint functionality and interacting with the game map itself. Um, once that go, goes live, that will be put in place. And then the same, you know, mechanic of clicking and selecting acres is, is going to be repurposed and used for um, farm gameplay that comes later on. Um, but from a user value perspective, right now the priorities from a from a product launch perspective are racing payouts fractionalization, um, responsiveness, speed, and user adoption, um, click and mint functionality for the land, and then stabling is going to come after that. Um, so that's kind of where we're at from a stabling um, perspective. And then on top of it, um, we are kind of finalizing the way that we're going to implement stable creation. Because um, when you're building your, your farm, and we actually went back and forth as a team on this, we need to make sure that there's flexibility around the way that you want to um, set up the structure. So we'll be introducing kind of a simplified version for farm creation at first, and then over time introducing additional settings you can incorporate directly in your farm. And because we are taking the logic off chain, it'll give us flexibility on how we introduce the farm settings, um, how we kind of get community feedback to implement new features around it all, and then getting those all live. But I did want to quickly touch on the prioritization order and the way that we essentially make decisions from a product roadmap perspective. Awesome, thank you. Um, next one, will rewards be paid uh, in ETH? Uh, yes, um, we're going to verify race winnings, uh, and then we're going to transfer ETH directly into your connected wallet. Uh, I'm going to group that together with another ETH-related question down below. Uh, does Silks have any plans if Ethereum becomes regulated in the US? Um, we built our architecture for, for this project and the infrastructure around it with a lot of flexibility. So the way we think about it is that we're building to conform to the regulation that exists now with the flexibility um, to pivot to different chains of protocols and tools um, and change the amount of centralization versus decentralization so that we're super flexible with whatever regulatory environment changes happen. Um, so we'll, we're, we're pretty flexible. Um, it'll be relatively easy for us to move. We're not super tied down to anything, um, but we'll be able to navigate it. Um, going back, there's uh, 
Will there way, be a way to track status and news on our horses um, uh, linked to a news feed related to an IRL stable on the horse and the, on the portal's horse page? Um, I'll, I'll take this one. It, it, yes, that's that's part of um, uh, one of the things that we have. We want to make sure that you guys have a lot of the data that you, that you need to make good decisions around the game uh, surfaced within the portal itself. So this, that's on the list um, um, as part of the, the resource data page. Will the amount we're playing for change earlier or will that change as the um, game grows? And will there be a tracker for what percentage we're, we're, we're uh, playing for? Uh, yeah, so we provided a comp of what the race entries page looks like. Um, so on a very micro level, each race will have the purse listed on it, along with the correlating silk surprise purse uh, next to it. Um, well, the beginning of the, the season, the way we look at it, so there's a lot of um, our pricing is fundamentally driven by the our biggest revenue driver, which is the sale of new horses. So as horse prices go up year to year, so will the price, the, the size of the prize pool. Um, if we find that market conditions don't allow us to increase the price of our horses, then similarly, the, the price pool won't increase also. Um, but that's the plan. So the plan is we go, we do our horse sale at the beginning of every year. Um, we're thinking that we should be able to sell out of those horses every year um, to, again, to that breeder crop of you guys um, with Genesis avatars who then fractionalize it down. Um, so then we're guaranteed the amount of revenue that we need to fulfill a very high prize pool year to year uh, with the plan on increasing the cost of horses every year uh, as, as you guys can fractionalize them and then increasing the prize pool every year alongside it. So 1% is the commitment for this year. Uh, next year, our, our, our goal, and we've, we've expressed it before, is to increase that substantially year to year um, as we kind of continue to grow. Um, any plans on helping players who minted horses that are either um, that, you know, I, I assume they, this person means that uh, had passed away or sold overseas and can no longer race uh, in the US. Um, we, we've put a um, we've we've put a, a, a statement out on this. Um, if your horse has been been put down and uh, you don't have a, a living horse anymore, please contact support and, and we'll work out a solution for you guys. Um, if your horse has moved overseas, um, we have no plans to uh, offer refunds or remits on those horses. Um, we do have we do recognize that some horses are brought over to the U.S. to race and then they're brought back overseas. Similarly, horses are brought from overseas to race in the US. So just because your horse is currently being stabled overseas does not mean whether or not they're going to race um, in the US. Uh, similarly, we have plans of global domination. So when we expand to different territories, um, you know, ownership of a silks horse is a, is a, is a multi-year time horizon. Um, I encourage you guys to be patient. And, and if we roll out um, internationally, your horse might be you know, already there and being ready to race. Um, so that's the that's the fundamental um, you know statement that we have on it, and that's our policy regarding uh, regarding those horses. Uh, are there any more upcoming events with Naira that's planned? Um, you know, Troy's going to be uh, on on air uh, this weekend for the Wood Memorial on on Saturday. Um, you know, you'll have some some. Stuff that they're talking about there as far as future initiatives with them. We're talking to them, you know, on a daily basis, um, creating plans around what kind of presence we're going to have at Belmont, where we're going to look at in, in Saratoga and, um, and how we're going to be leveraging Aqueduct as well. We have a lot of things that we're working on with them. So stay tuned on that. Naira has been a fantastic partner um, and they're really giving us a, a lot of options on ways that we can kind of work together. Uh, next question is about uh, staking uh, options for avatars um, and a around providing a silks token. Uh, I think this is this is something that we discussed and, and early in the project. I think it was definitely discussed even more when there was a, a silks token that was attached to it. Uh, for now, this is this is outside of our scope. Um, Finney just talked about the status of stabling, uh, and then there's a question that, that's added on to this. Some people have been holding Skyfalls. Uh, because it was told the only way to claim rewards. Not quite sure what that necessarily means, but if that, if the intention there is maybe around 
Um, founder stables, founder stables are, are driven by Genesis avatars, not by not by your Skyfalls land parcels. So either you redeem them and you're going to get put on the map right now, or you can wait and, and uh, we'll redeem them for you. Um, we've already expressed exactly how that is. So it's kind of up to you how you want to do it. Um, is there be a swap proposal within the uh, a, a swap function uh, within the portal? Um, like you can offer to swap a 10 acre plot for somebody else's 10 acre plot. Um, we do plan on having a trading mechanism uh, in the portal down the road. Um, so our, our marketplace would be a fully featured. So that would be one of the things that we'll, we'll, that we'll, we'll be adding um, down the road. Um, Last one, can you publish a calendar with clear dates and transparent details of what will be launched and when? Um, this is for any company developing tech as standard. Uh, I, you know, I, I beg to differ with that. I, I've been making games for 20 years and, and publishing delivery dates is, is certainly not the standard. Um, I, would, I would actually venture to guess that anybody that is publishing a date uh, has padded the heck out of that date to make sure that they hit it um, rather than just, you know, giving some sort of guidelines of, of priority list and, and roadmap of when we expect to do things. Um, so game making is, is, is really, really difficult. It's like it's a combination of, of the rigidity of technology with the fluidity of art. Um, and those things come together in beautiful ways, but sometimes it's very unpredictable. So we're doing the best we can. I think Benny's kind of outlined what that uh, priority list is and, and how we're going to go uh, and work our way through it. Uh, I think that uh, oh, there is one here. Uh, how big is the current team versus the 50 full-time employees previously? Uh, and how are you covering the operating costs uh, when the tech industry is uh, drastically downscaling? Um, you know, it's, it's great to be growing in a shrinking market. Um, you know, there's a lot of great talent that's on the market right now, uh, as evidenced by us you know, getting Srini, which is a you know, huge coup. Um, we'll be able to grow. Um, there's a ton of talent that's in, in, in my network alone that we'll be able to bring on board. Um, we're not super worried about this. Like we have a project that's growing with a lot of opportunity. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's a very attractive project for, uh, for talent to kind of come aboard. Um, with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to, um, Squid and Ben. Well, see if anybody has any live questions or anything I didn't cover. Yeah, I think um, we're a little over the time limit. If anyone, you know, will call up two, three people. And um, yeah, no, the same thing. I know I'm super hyped up right now. So if anyone wants to raise their hands, we'll call you up. There we go. Hi, yeah, this is Blue Rocket. I'm in California. I just wanted to thank the team. This is an amazing game. I'm really pleased. And also appreciate your taking hard questions straight on and giving straight answers. Um, there's something that I wanted to bring up for a while, and that's regarding auctions. Um, I would love to challenge Silks to find an alternate method of distributing horses. Um, you know, auctions are, are fun and splashy, but the reality is that most people um, can't participate, right? Uh, auctions end up with the best horses being in the hands of the wealthiest top few players. Um, and I find that concerning and also kind of demoralizing and deflating for the rest of us. Uh, and I think there are great opportunities for alternatives, um, something like a raffle. Uh, you know, the name could be changed. It doesn't have to be called a raffle, but something where uh, a price is set that just about every player can afford and you can buy tickets. Um, I think there should be a cap, maybe three to five tickets or so. And, um, and you know, the more the greater possibilities people think a horse has, the more people will buy tickets. And uh, so I would love to to see that option. Um, and really, if you, there are quite a few businesses out there that are now eliminating auction as their system of, of distribution um, because of the inequities involved in it. Um, but that's, that's my main thought. And I guess I do have one other point is the timeframe that you give us for 
um, for us to react. So for example, for the Kentucky Derby, what it says in the fine print is that the winner only has two days to respond. Um, and frequently our response time is limited to just one or two or three days. And that has been challenging for me and I would imagine other people as well. Thank you very much. Um, I, I like these to just comment in regards to the raffles and auctions. Um, the ultimate goal for us would be that every horse is sold unrevealed in the beginning of every year, September of the yearling crop. So the auctions right now is a fill in to give everyone the opportunity to see a horse. The plan and the intention of the company is that we're not going to see that again, hopefully next year. So uh, it will le level out the playing field, completely understand um, about uh, the thought process of the auction does lean to people that are willing to spend more money. Um, this, the second comment to that is this game, horse racing and silks, there's there's a big leveling out uh in regards to the most expensive horses sometimes aren't the best uh, I'll, I'll give you an example um the horse that's the favorite to win in the kentucky derby is a horse called forte he is by a stallion called violence um he was purchased for a hundred thousand dollars out of the sale the same day the same owners bought another colt by violence for 1.1 million the horse that's sold for 1.1 million, he's retired and is literally becoming a riding horse. And the horse that they spent 100,000 is probably going to win the Kentucky Derby. So, uh, you know, logistically and visually, sometimes it, 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 it's hard to see that auctions are going to the same uh, person or people or groups. Um, the great thing about horses and athletes, they don't know how much, how much the they're worth how much people paid for them they just know if they want to run or not so uh i just wanted to throw that comment out there uh and in, in regards to the sweepstakes response time i, I totally get it we're, we're we're um using a sweepstakes company to make sure that there's a lot of laws that are associated with them and, and that's one of the things that they have um so that they can validate the winner and then kind of move on to the next one if they're not validated so i get it and and there's there's probably other things of, of you know, that's probably a, a much more generalized sense of um, us giving the community a, a chance to prepare. So things like creating the Slido well in advance of this as things that we want to do so that we're giving everybody a proper amount of time to adjust to uh, things as they kind of change. So we'll, we'll work on that. Thank you both very much. Well, okay. I think uh, no one else's hands are uh, up. If Troy, you want to close this out and um... You know, wrap it up. Absolutely, and, and I appreciate it. Um, w one of the the greatest feelings is of, of being someone in my position where, you know, um, with the Game of Silks and, you know, being a founder and strategic partner, investor, um, is listening to the group of individuals that are part of, of the company. Uh, and I hope everyone has heard the same thing that i hear every single day of the passion of the project um and that literally goes from everybody part of this team um i will say that the game of silks horse racing it's an imperfect world you know it's a world that you build and little things always come about if it's a mishap in programming, uh, misspelling, but it's the way that a company and a team handles it, makes the adjustments and keep on moving forward. And that's who we are. And I'm truly proud of the group, the company, and again, the people that are participating in it. And um, I just can't wait till Friday. Everyone get the feeling and uh, we'll keep on moving forward. And I, I look forward to the next AMA and, uh, Hopefully, we'll have a lot more hands and a lot more people raising their hands with the thrill and the excitement of uh, owning a racehorse.